Yeah, you played with a lot of artists. You met a lot of artists yeah. uh, in a really short time. Yeah. Which ones uh, do you recall as being really special? Oh man, the the top dog, the yeah. chief. It's Stevie Wonder. I met Stevie Wonder, and he, I mean, he's my idol, man. I love Stevie Wonder, uh, and I was—I never get speechless when I meet people, you know. Even if they're a big artist, I'll get a bit quiet, but I won't be like. Ah. And when I met Stevie Wonder, I was like that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, "You're Stevie Wonder," and he was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "I was like, you're a legend." I was like, "Oh, I was nearly, I was nearly in tears, man." I was like, "Get a grip, get a grip." But yeah, he's he's probably you know, my, the, I never thought I'd ever get to meet Stevie Wonder. So, me and him, like, and and I met. Um, I mean, I know um, Yusuf Islam, Cat Stevens, quite well. Nice. Well, not quite well, but I've met him a few times, and I recorded some um, backing vocals for his new album and stuff. So that was cool. No way. Wow. Yeah, that was great. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Hey, another thing, I want to go back to the album. Uh, Love is hard is one of your last songs on it. Yeah. Uh, I like the end of it. I uh, agree. <laughs> yeah. To elaborate on it a little. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think, yeah, that was all about kind of, uh, yeah, being true. You know, while I was away, seeing a lot of people, you know, cuddling and kissing down the street, and you kind of think, oh, is that gonna, is that just like a fickle kind of? You do see a lot of people like, yeah, we're in love, and then two weeks later, it's over, and you're like, well, that wasn't love. You could, yeah, you know, it kind of just made me really see. I was going through a hard time at the time, you know, being away and getting used to being away and going home and it not being lovey-dovey and you got to work at it and make sure, you know, you, you you let the other person know you're there for them and it was all about that, really. At the end of the song, is if it wasn't easy... It if it was been. easy, it wouldn't mean nothing, yeah, yeah. That was kind of, it was weird because that was an ad-lib right at the end. I didn't even know I was going to say it, I just kind of come out with it, which it it's not, it's not, you know, genius or anything, but... <laughs> But yeah, I'm just really glad that, you know, it, it stayed in there. That little line stayed in there. It kind of tied it all up really well. A lot, a lot, a lot of people uh, send you mails and texts and shit, I guess. A lot of questions on the web. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a couple. Okay. How, how tall are you? How tall am I? I think, uh, I think I'm five foot ten. Maybe a little bit taller, maybe five foot ten and a half. I'm not, I'm not tall by any stretch of the imagination. You're a big I'm artist. Just in that, I'm just in that space between small and tall. So that's all right, medium. <laughs> hey, what guitar pick did you use in the Abbey Road sessions? In the Abbey Road sessions? God, I haven't got a clue. Me it's probably, I mean, I usually use like a, uh, what are they called? Um, they're like standard, I think they're just standard. Plectrums, uh, what are they called? Oh yeah, Dunlop, Jim Dunlop. <laughs> <laughs> 73 mil, that's what you that's just the right amount of thickness I need. But sometimes I don't use plectrum, so I don't know. Okay. That's a really specific question, isn't it? That's some crazy stuff in it. Um, what's on your iPod? You don't have to mention everything, right? My iPod. Uh, well, I've got one iPad from about two years ago, uh, and my my computer crashed with all my iTunes on. I haven't sorted it out, so it's still got what I put on, which is Toots and Maytels, Stevie Wonder, Sublime. Cat Stevens, it's got a bit of, uh, I didn't put, literally, I didn't, I just whacked a couple of bits on there while I was going away and then my computer broke, so I've still got hardly anything on there. Uh, I've got a bit of Phoenix, a band called Phoenix, a bit of Katie Tunstall, I think, Jill put that on there. Uh, that's about it, there's not a lot, but I've got, I mean, my CD collection is, is massive at home, I've got yeah. so much good music at home. Is there, is there, is there a live album coming out? A live album. I'd love to do a live album. I did, um, in England, I did release uh, a live album, um, a live footage with the the album itself. Um, but in the future, I, I'd definitely like to make a live DVD, definitely. Because your live rap is amazing. Yeah, it's all good at the moment, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, with, with time, you just get better with time. And I've just wanted to wait till the right time to release something live that's going to be kick-ass rather than, oh, I could have done better than that, you know. I just want to make sure it's it's spot on when I do when I do, do a live album. Another thing, you you were apparently busking in Nuki. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, Did I used you? to go busking a lot. Yeah, busking was my way of kind of earning money, my way of, like, getting more confident. And, yeah, it's a good laugh. Yeah, it's a good, um, yeah, it gives you a bit more thick skin, yeah. It toughens you up, you know, because... When you're out in the street, people are just like, you know, they either like it or they don't, you know. And I've I've been threatened before, like, if you don't shut up singing, mate, 
You know, I'm like, Little whatever, yeah, yeah, I was like, down. whatever. <laughs> Would you do it again, just for the joke? Yeah, I mean, I had to do it long, not so long ago. Uh, on my birthday, actually, it was my birthday. Uh, and I was doing a radio tour, and they wanted me to uh, go busking in Birmingham. We oui, seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had, uh, I had to go busking in Birmingham on my birthday, and uh, it was all for charity. I did it for charity, so that was, that was cool as well, you know. It was good to actually go back to doing that. It just reminded me of where I've come from. And But did somebody recognise you? Or did well, you, a, did you grow a huge first, beard? At first, they were like, who's this guy, man? Who's this guy? And I was like, I'm James Morrison. And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was that kind of vibe. But did you yeah. attract a crowd? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was a big crowd. After about 20 minutes, yeah, it was a big crowd of people. And they're, yeah, they're all really great, man. I mean, it's stuff like that that just uh, makes you feel like, uh, you know, it's not none of the media working you. It's just your songs doing the job, you know. And that's what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted my songs and the music to, to be the thing that gets you out there rather than just, oh, there's someone famous in the street pretending that they're a real artist or whatever. I just hate all that stuff. So... You know, I did it. I, I used to do that when I was young, so it was like second nature to me, which was really cool. Cool. Hey, another another weird question. Did you used to wear glasses? Do I what? Did I, you I used do to wear glasses. Yeah, I do wear yeah. glasses. Yeah, yeah, I'm blind as a no, bat. No. Yeah, I'm short-sighted really bad, actually. I didn't notice until I was about 11. And then I got some... I, I just thought everyone had to get up to the front of the class and look at them. <laughs> Yeah, for years it just didn't even click, and they're like, "Maybe you need glasses, James." And I was like, "Oh yeah," and I checked him out. I was like, "Well, I can see." <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I, um, I lose them all the time. I mean, I've probably bought about 30 pairs of glasses in the last four years. It's ridiculous how many glass pairs of glasses I go through. But I just, I don't like wearing them. I feel like a, a geek in them. You don't want an operation, laser your eyes, or nah, nah. I, I mean, I know people who've done it. I, like, I've got a friend whose dad who did it, and uh, and he went the other way. He was like he was he was short sighted, so he couldn't see he couldn't see you know far away. Yeah. But then then they did it so that he couldn't see close up, and he was like, "What?" So yeah, so they ruined his eyes, man. I was like, "Nah, I'd rather just wear glasses," you know. That can only happen in Britain, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Social so security. Laser place. Yeah, we'll do it, mate. Five quid. Yeah, <laughs> fiver. Hey, another thing, I was watching uh, the making of uh, of the video of uh, Broken Strings on the, on the web, oh, yeah. and the last part was just you laughing your ass off. Oh, with yeah. <laughs> What was that all about? Uh, well, it was because um, <laughs> we, we were told that there was going to be this big explosion at the end of the day like on the set, and they yeah. got all this big team of people in, like safe fire and safety guys, you know. Yeah. And they had a policeman there with a gun and a f and the fire brigade were there and they were making a big deal about this explosion. And the guy was like, look, guys, you know, if you don't need to be in here, you better get out there. Maybe shards. Uh, you know, he's making it out to be real dramatic. And uh, and then we went and sat over the way there and looked at the teleprompter just to see what was going to happen. They're like, three, two, one. It just went... And that was it. And we were all just like, what is that? I was like, I was expecting like, like a big flame ball, you know? It. Yeah, and it was, that was it. So we were just crying. I was wondering, actually, did you ever get to meet Nelly at all during yeah, the making? Yeah, or? Yeah. I, I met her, um, I've met her a couple of times. I met her first at a Diana concert that I had to do. Uh, only briefly, just kind of said hello. And, Um, and then I met her when we when we recorded the song. I'd already I'd already recorded my vocal. Uh, I had one day with her because she was quite busy doing her own album and stuff. So I flew to Canada and, and I had one day with her in the studio. Of course, you could have done it all without meeting each other, right? Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't like. It's a bit cold, you know. I like to be there and be a part of it, and you know, no. Oh yeah, I remember when she did that bit, or you know, I, I think that's you know that's at least a perk you got to get. You got to be able to meet the person you're singing with. That's a perk out of the job, isn't it? You know, I think it would be. Yeah, I think it. A lot of people do do like that, where they just send it across and stuff, but. I really like kind of meeting the person and, you know, having some sort of connection before you do it. It's always better, I think. Your record company executive is hating us right now, so we have to quit this. Right. One last thing. Uh, you're almost on. You play tonight in Amsterdam. Yeah. Everybody wants to know where else you're playing and are you coming back to do festivals? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm doing a lot of festivals this year and there's a pretty good chance I'll come back to Holland, definitely. You know, I've got a great fan base here, so 
I wouldn't want to let them down. And Everybody else in the world just check the web. And yeah, just check the web. Yeah, I've got a little tour in America coming up in about three, four days, and that's for a month um, a with Adele. That's with Adele. Um, so yeah, that should be great. And then yeah, I'm doing festivals, and I've got my own tour going on in England as well for a couple of months. So. And a new album coming up. All good news. Well, the new album's out already, thank God. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll be I'll be trying to get another one together at some point in the next couple of years as well. So yeah, I'll just be busy really doing gigs. So hopefully I'll see you.